What can you suggest to the folks that are being attacked or not treated well by people different from them? Is there anything they can do to to, to, to protect themselves or or sort of uh, deal with that painful uh, behavior? Um, let's hope so, right? Because it happens yeah. all yeah. over the place. Um, my my strong assertion there is to do something because mm -hmm. silence is agreement. Um, yeah. I just, I just don't, it depends on what your worldview is, right? But I personally don't believe that people get up in the morning to make your life difficult, but it happens, right? There are people yeah. names that are on the tip of my tongue at the dinner table or um, for a caregiver that goes and says, listen to what, listen to what he or she did again today, you know, and, and it could be around fear or discomfort. But the thing is, it, if we don't take action on that, we can't hold the resident accountable because behavior of which they're not even aware is difficult, if not impossible to control. I may not even be aware that that behavior is inappropriate. I may not be aware as a resident that that behavior is hurtful. So we do have, let me just grab my little whiteboard here and see if this helps a little to, we do have a three-step process that we like to suggest, particularly in, in instances like this. Um, the first one is to pause. Um, it's called the PDT, pause. I'll just write it down and then I'll give, give an example here. It's PDT, pause, decide, and take action. And I got to get a better smelling marker. These expo markers will just about knock you out. <laughs> so in our, in our pause stage, this is where you really have to take a step back and avoid that amygdala hijack. Um, the brain has three key areas, right? It, it's got the, the, the reptilian brain or that limbic system that basically tells you, you know, hey, I'm going to sort all this information through. And if anything makes it up into the amygdala, which is the center brain, that's where you get into fight, flight, or freeze. And if I anticipate that, or if I, if I anticipate that that resident's going to be difficult again, I'm already setting myself up for failure. Yeah. If, if the resident says something wildly inappropriate that really sets me back, my amygdala is going to protect me because it's very, very primal. And the, the brain stem is the one part of the brain that truly has not even evolved yet. So it's still on, am I going to get, come out of the cave and get attacked by that, you know, tiger? Is that, is that, is this dangerous? Is it really? And we can't, we can't in a split second decide, is it true or is it just what my brain is telling me? Because it's so powerful. So in pause, I suggest two questions. Is what I'm feeling accurate? And is it helpful? Am I feeling really angry? Am I threatened? Am I, am I really thrown back on my heels? Am I disappointed in this behavior? Yes. Is that feeling accurate? Absolutely. But is it helpful to have that be the story that you continue to tell yourself moving forward? Because nobody's going to win. And you're the one that's going to go home. The, the, you know, the caregiver is the one that's going to go home and, and pop the Tums and, you know, yeah. 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 And then in deciding, the key question is, what do I need to believe in this moment? to be the best caregiver that I can be. And that's where we shift that thought. So if, if the amygdala is hanging on to it and it's been you know triggered, which clearly there are reasons why we should be triggered in those inappropriate moments. If we ask ourselves, is what I'm feeling accurate, is it helpful? Then what do I need to believe? Now we can get that thought into the prefrontal cortex, which is where rational critical thinking happens. Very little of what we do on a daily basis actually makes it into our critical thinking, our, our conscious brain. So that mindset shift of asking that critical question here, what do I need to believe at this moment to be the best caregiver I can? That's the mindset shift. And then the take action is, what's the next best move I can make? How can I serve in this situation? And it might be using the next acronym, which is SBI, Situation, Behavior, and Impact. 
You have to be able to verbalize that. That is that for me, that was a hurtful comment. And I, I am here to help you. Please let me do that. And then I know what happens with my mother is she'll say hurtful. Why? Because literally she's just not um, as present as she was when she was 50. Right. So so that conversation has to happen. <laughs>